The galaxy is hardly a vast empty space. Dynamic forces long ago filled the cosmos with the mobile detritus of the Big Bang. Asteroids and comets hurl through the darkness, each on their own individual course. Collisions with other celestial bodies and each other is inevitable and can dramatically alter the universe. As brilliant fireballs on a collision course with Earth come nearer and nearer every day, should humans fear the coming of a mass extinction of life? A violent impact could destroy the planet. Spaceflight reveals data that may protect Earth from a devastating impact. But scientists have also learned that the universe may need these rocks to sustain itself. Human life swings in the balance of evolution, at once master and victim of the natural world. at the starry night sky merely hints at the wonders that lie beyond. Billions of years of work began in a turbulent cloud of dust and gas. Forces conspired to pull these specks of matter together as heavier and faster moving galactic building blocks. Constantly moving matter danced in chaos, exploding in violent collisions and growing to form planets. One of these collisions was enough to start life on Earth. The most violent impact Earth has ever known created its moon. Matter sent spinning furiously into space, fused with the asteroid and settled in Earth's orbit. Was this the beginning of life on Earth? It's likely that human beings have wondered about the origin of life from the very beginning. Students in central France learn how the violence of the cosmos makes life possible. Why are there different seasons? It's because our planet is tilted. Why is our planet tilted? A theory held by scientists is that at the end of the creation of the solar system four billion years ago, a giant asteroid struck the Earth. According to this theory, the force of the impact was so great that it knocked Earth on its side, tilting it approximately 23 and a half degrees and creating two hemispheres that move toward and away from the warm rays of the sun. The seasonal tilt explains the colorful symphony of bursting buds in spring and the crimson hues of autumn. Seasons force animals to migrate in search of green every summer and a warm hideout in winter. Some animals travel across the hemispheres, opting for a refreshing beach while the cold months of winter rage half a world away. For the people of Rochechouart in central France, a cosmic collision hit home some 200 million years ago, at the end of the Triassic period and the dawning of the age of the dinosaurs. The land was bursting with diverse life forms. Then, suddenly, disaster struck. A giant asteroid exploded above Earth and shattered to pieces. Five of the pieces streamed toward Earth and made impact, landing at different locations and crushing the Earth's surface into impact craters. Researchers curious about the origin of these meteorites lined up the continents as they would have looked at the time of impact. They found that three of the five craters, two in Canada and one in France, fall along the same line. Two other craters in the Ukraine and the United States fall surprisingly close to the same line, compelling evidence that these five meteorites came from one original rock.
the meteorite fragment that hit Rosh Hashanah crashed to Earth at a speed of 70,000 kilometers per hour. On impact, the meteorite released energy 14 million times greater than that of the atomic bomb at Hiroshima. Scientists believe that the energy from the impact vaporized the meteorite itself, making it difficult to find clues about the asteroid before impact. From the sheer strength and violence of impact, scientists estimate that all existing life forms in the area were destroyed. At the Champagnac Quarry, a few kilometers from Rochechouart, this cross-section of rock illustrates what happened to Earth. Tremendous energy produced a shock wave that exploded the rock high into the air. Thousand degree temperatures vaporized billions of tons of earth rocks, fusing them with materials from the meteorite. This fused matter eventually settled on the surrounding area in what is known as an ejecta blanket. Although no individual piece of the actual meteorite has ever been found in the Rochechouart region, the picturesque village's buildings bear dramatic physical reminders of the event. The distinctive rocky mix created at the time of the impact is visible everywhere. The castle, the church, and most of the houses were built with the same uniquely formed rock. Sarcophagi were carved from the same material during the Middle Ages and the Romans used these breach stones to build thermal baths and other buildings in the region. Geologists examine rocks from Rochechouart under intense scrutiny, searching for signs from space. The effects of a violent collision are clearly visible on distressed quartz stones. Even if evidence of a great collision fades with time, Rosh Hashanah will bear its scar for many years to come. Asteroids and comets careening through space threaten Earth, but also bring potential new life. Some scientists believe that asteroids once formed a planet that was blown apart in the early chaos of the cosmos. Millions of cosmic objects orbit the sun in a far off region called the asteroid belt. Meteorites are fragments of asteroids that actually fall into Earth's orbit. What happens when they hit our planet? We have clues. Meteors, commonly called shooting stars, streak through the Earth's atmosphere as bands of light and energy. Not all comets sport flashy tails, but they all carry icy water laden with dust and cosmic debris. Scientists theorize that comets brought the water of the oceans and carbon-rich material that make up the very stuff of life on Earth. Still, comets are perhaps even more dangerous on impact than asteroids. They dwell in the distant regions of our solar system. More than 100 million comets seem to exist in relative calm in the Kuiper's belt. A gigantic outer reach known as the Oort cloud hosts another trillion comets that lie in wait.
magnetic and gravitational forces in the solar system operate like a giant pinball machine, randomly setting these icy boulders in motion. Both Mercury and the Moon owe their pockmarked faces to encounters with comets. Planet satellites and asteroids also bear a few scars from these rather brutal encounters. Less than 100 years ago, our very own planet experienced one of these cosmic impacts. On June 30th, 1908, near the Tunguska River in Siberia, the sky seemed to tear in the wake of a blinding white streak of light. A terrifying explosion set off a shockwave that leveled trees for 30 kilometers in every direction. Hundreds of reindeer vanished, fires raged, and people feared for their lives. The impact was heard more than 1,000 kilometers away, roughly the distance between Moscow and Stockholm. In 1927, almost 20 years after the disaster, a Soviet mineralogist, Leonid Kulik, leads an expedition to the scene of the explosion. But getting there proves difficult. Kulik's reindeer cannot pull the expedition sleds through the murky swamps. With the water levels high, the small group risks drowning to cross the rivers. Finally, after enduring hardship for weeks on end, Kulik arrives at the apocalyptic scene. Twenty years after impact, its devastating effect on the landscape remains obvious. The ground is leveled, surrounding trees all uprooted. Kulik made four arduous journeys to Tunguska. He never found a crater and failed to produce so much as a pebble-sized bit of a meteorite. He died in World War II, believing there were fragments buried at Tunguska. Scientists now accept that some meteorites actually burn up and others vaporize from high-temperature storms and shock waves radiating through space. Others shatter from the force of their entrance into the Earth's atmosphere. But Tunguska was the first modern cosmic impact on Earth, the first evidence in our lifetime of the very real danger faced by the human species. Scientists have learned that the meteorite at Tunguska spanned some 50 meters in diameter and exploded with the force of 15 megatons of dynamite. Space observations continue on January 4, 1989. In spite of a few clouds speckling the sky at dusk, the night seems well suited for stargazing. The scientists at work expect a routine night of peering into the universe. Telescopes have brought us closer to outer space than we ever hoped. In a round of usual tests, the astronomers fix their telescope on Jupiter the most massive of the planets in our solar system. Wow! What's up, there, Alain? What's up? Dawn. The night's photographs reveal a freeze frame of an asteroid's path. The discoverers chose to baptize the new asteroid Tutatis a humorous nod to the adventures of Asterix the Gaul, a popular French cartoon series. The characters in the series, who worship the god Tutatis, fear more than anything else that one day the sky might fall. Discovering Tutatis proved particularly important because the plane of its orbit is closer to Earth's orbit than any other known near-Earth asteroid. The day Tutetis was discovered, the 10-kilometer rock could very well have landed on our heads as it grazed Earth by a mere 15 million kilometers, only one-tenth of the distance between the Earth and the Sun, a short distance in astronomical terms. A few months later, 
in March 1989, an event of remarkable proportions played out directly over Earth. An asteroid crossed Earth's orbit at a point just 650,000 kilometers away. Observations in space reached a fevered pitch when the world watched a comet hurl towards Jupiter. On the night of July 16, 1994, the Shoemaker-Levy 9 comet fragmented into about 20 pieces and flew at a blistering speed of 200,000 kilometers per hour, nearly 100 times as fast as a supersonic Concorde jetliner. Both the internet and television broadcast near-live images of this space show around the world as the impact inflicted Earth-sized wounds on Jupiter. Technology launched into space gathers data to fuel humans' fascination and fear for impact science. The Giotto space probe that flew over Halley's Comet in March 1986 provided the world with stunning images of its core. As scientists watch the skies above Earth, it seems that an unexpected encounter with another celestial body is not nearly as remote or as unlikely as once thought. Consider this model of an asteroid belt floating between Mars and Jupiter. Now, look at Earth's proximity to this cosmic ballet. When will one hit? A sizable object, such as an asteroid measuring one kilometer, has an average probability of falling to Earth only once every 200,000 years. Still, with so much at stake, humans around the globe have allocated enormous amounts of energy, intelligence, and resources to studying the heavens in the hopes of predicting and possibly averting future cosmic collisions. One of the most impressive reconnaissance missions to date is the NEAR, or Near-Earth Asteroid Rendezvous Space Probe launched by the United States in February 1996. Four years into its three billion kilometer mission, NEAR reached its goal, a stable orbit around the Eros asteroid. For one full year, the probe mapped out and produced 160,000 photographs. It also collected a great deal of critical data. Eros, 33 kilometers long and 13 kilometers wide, is a solid body made up of materials probably older than Earth. It contains magnesium, silicon, and aluminum, basic elements dating the asteroid back to the creation of the solar system. Its surface bears a few craters and is strewn with large rocks 30 to 100 meters high. Mission accomplished for the near probe. But back on Earth, NASA officials decided to assign the probe one final task, to attempt a landing on the Eros asteroid. In addition to gathering valuable samples of extraterrestrial materials, the NEAR satellite would provide scientists with their first close-up look at one of thousands of near-Earth asteroids. Though not included in the original flight plan, the February 2001 landing would go down in history as a first in space exploration. The near spacecraft has touched down on the surface of Eros. This is the first time that any spacecraft has landed on a small body. Just a short while ago, in evolutionary terms, one of these might have hit Earth. 200,000 years ago, a giant meteorite 40 meters wide struck the southern African savanna.
Some scientists say it's possible that early humans witnessed the event. All we have now is the crater that remains. Impact craters are formed according to the size of the meteorite and its angle upon collision. At the time of impact, some parcels of matter are ejected into the atmosphere, while others work to create a rim. This phenomenon can be compared to a drop of rain falling in water. First, a shock wave spreads. Then a crater is formed, sometimes followed by a central peak. Compared to the craters that formed millions of years ago, the Tsuwang crater is relatively young. 200,000 years of soil erosion has not yet erased the details of the crater's profile. The origin of Tsuwang has been highly controversial for more than 100 years. It's only in the last five years that it was possible to confirm it as a meteorite crater. That was done by obtaining a drill core through the whole structure, which not only provided unambiguous evidence for impact, but also gave us a 200,000-year-long paleo-environmental record of life and vegetation that uh, occurred since the formation of the crater in this region. Now we know what animals lived, what animals possibly died in the course of the impact event. We suspect that early humans, hominids, probably observed and some of them may have been killed in the course of this impact event at Swain. The largest meteorite fragment ever found on Earth was discovered in 1920 near the Hoba farm in Namibia. The impact took place 80,000 years ago. This 50-ton rock is composed of 82% iron, 16% nickel, and 1% cobalt. It possibly provided people living in the area with the iron needed to make their early tools and weapons. Could meteorites like these be responsible for life on Earth? Astrophysicist Hubert Reeves explains. The agglomeration of these bodies formed a planet which grew larger and larger to eventually become Earth. This formation, made up of asteroids, meteorites and comets, also brought water and other elements necessary for life. So in a sense, our very existence here on Earth is linked to these meteoritic collisions. Some scientists believe the amino acids that make up protein, the building blocks of life, of which humans are a result, could have traveled through space to bring life to our oceans. Today, in each living being on Earth, one can find 20 distinct varieties of amino acids. But do these building blocks of life exist in space? The question was put to exobiologist André Brack. These amino acids traveled to Earth through space via large carbonated meteorites. The best example of this is the one that fell in Murchison, Australia. There, scientists have detected 100 different amino acids, several of which enter into the composition of life. These same amino acids are also present in micrometeorites found in the Antarctic. Excited by the possibility of life beyond Earth, a team of international scientists set up a controlled simulation of space travel. They coat amino acids in a mix of carbon dust from meteorites, much the same way that they would be coated in cosmic granules. They then place them outside Russia's Mir space station for a three-month experiment. After they're retrieved, Andre Brack and his team demonstrate how well these building blocks of life sustained the trip. The results of the study were promising. They established the existence of amino acids in space, but the connection with life on Earth is still a quandary. 
Scientists are now finding traces of life older than those previously found, some dating back as far as 3.5 billion years. Perhaps one day, ancient fossils dating back to even earlier times will be discovered. So ancient, they could not have been born on Earth at all. At the end of its creation, Earth may have lacked the necessary elements to create life. Scientists theorize that bacteria, an essential microorganism that's capable of sustaining life on its own, may have nested in the heart of meteorites that struck Earth just a short while later. Could bacteria-laden meteorites have successfully resisted the sun's lethal rays and managed to clear entry to Earth's atmosphere? If so, it's possible that the bacteria could have survived the violence of an impact. At the Institute of Genetics and Microbial Biology in Lausanne, Switzerland, a laboratory has been transformed for this particular experiment. It has become a torture chamber for bacteria. Researchers make sure that nothing is spared in testing the resistance of bacteria to meteorite impacts. Test number one, resistance to shock waves. First, bacteria cells, the type often found in human intestines, are placed in a metal case. Next, the case is handed over to the pyrotechnician, who carefully loads it with nitroglycerin. Preparations are made for the blast. Analysis of the sampled bacteria indicates an almost 100% survival rate. This means the bacteria could very likely have sustained the shock wave from a meteorite impact. The second test is ballistic manipulation. A rifle shot measures the bacteria's resistance to acceleration at 100,000 Gs. Then the bacteria are subjected to the force of 300,000 Gs as they decelerate into a sand-filled bottle. These tests are more powerful than what a meteorite might experience during a collision, entrance into Earth's atmosphere, and eventual impact. Quite an impressive performance considering how a human being in, say, a car accident can only withstand 500 Gs for a fraction of a second. The results of the experiment are in. As with the nitroglycerin explosion, the bacteria's survival rate is nearly 100%. Finally, the last test. The bacteria will spin in a centrifugal machine, a procedure that will serve to confirm the previous test results. By the end of their ride on this miniature merry-go-round, the bacteria submitted to one million Gs are intact and virtually identical to cells that haven't been subjected to the torturous testing. It appears as though nothing within the cells has been altered. Scientists speculate that bacteria probably possess the ability to reorganize in a fraction of a second after the centrifugal machine stops, using the Earth's gravity as a reference. To demonstrate this, the bacteria are transported onto a plane to observe how they react in a centrifuge, only this time in zero gravity. The results show a significant difference between the bacterial cells on Earth at normal gravity and those at zero gravity. 
It seems that at zero gravity, the inside of the cell behaves differently. This means the bacteria use the Earth's gravity to reorganize very quickly after an awesome impact, such as the impact of a meteorite. This knowledge opens the doors for some intriguing speculation on the possible origins of life here on Earth. If bacteria was brought to Earth by an outside force, like an impact between a meteorite and Mars, then a subsequent catastrophic event on Earth may have sent some of that bacteria back into space, possibly falling onto other planets or back onto Earth once again. Small amounts of bacteria may have even left the solar system, making it possible for Earth's biochemistry to disseminate throughout the galaxy. Perhaps even more intriguing, new life forms have been discovered in the depths of the ocean, where surprisingly, they were able to develop even without a light source. But even more stunning, biologists succeeded in reviving dormant bacteria found in the fossilized body of a bee, preserved in amber for 40 million years. We can now speculate that if dormant bacteria is able to sustain life for millions of years, it may also have survived a journey to Earth via a meteorite long ago. In 1931, fragments of a meteorite torn from the Vesta asteroid landed not far from the city of Tatawin in southern Tunisia. In April 2000, Alain Carillon and Jean-Alex Barra, both geologists, and Thierry Eulin, a microbiologist, took samples from these fragments. The scientists proceeded with the utmost care, under controlled conditions. Previous observations carried out on other fragments of the same meteorite revealed something quite peculiar. Highly detailed electronic scans showed some kind of rod-shaped objects on the rock's structural seam. These rods were certainly unusual. At less than 100 nanometers, one billionth of a meter, they were far too small to be bacteria. Researchers from the National Center for Scientific Research in France wanted to test a new idea. Maybe the meteorite had been colonized by abnormally small bacteria which originated on Earth. They ground the meteorite with its own sand and distilled water, then filtered only the extremely minute objects. These were then spread onto petri dishes in a culture medium, a substance that contains nutrients for growth. This was incubated for a week at about 30 degrees Celsius. A laser scan microscope then detected an extremely small object within one of these cultures. Their study confirmed it was a bacterium from Earth that was completely unknown until then. Scientists continue to unravel the mystery of creation. What may have brought life to Earth through microbacteria may also have been responsible for the destruction of entire species. The most famous meteorite could have triggered the disappearance of the dinosaurs. Researchers located the impact site of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. The monster crater, 180 kilometers in diameter, was formed 65 million years ago and is buried deep in the ocean. It was baptized Chicxulub for its proximity to the Maya. The researchers proposed that our oceans and lakes were populated with several species, such as fish, which had already been around for a long time. On land, the early forest was brimming with millions of invertebrates that had colonized all available environments.
Crocodiles, lizards, and other small reptiles had claimed territory. Some of these species would survive the tragedy to come. Most mammals lived underground, small and meek, while the gigantic dinosaur species dominated the land. Life was good, but destiny was about to change its course. Scientists made a strong argument for a massive hit, a giant meteorite that changed life on Earth forever. formidable shockwave circled the entire globe, followed by immeasurable quakes and a succession of devastating tidal waves. Forests were annihilated far beyond Mexico's borders. Tons of dust rose above the atmosphere. The sky turned pitch black. Scientists believe it would have been impossible to see anything on Earth for many months. Deprived of light and unable to photosynthesize, vegetation was crippled rapidly, starving vegetarian animals and shattering the food chain. Toxic elements fell back to earth in the form of acid rain. Coupled with bitter cold hovering around the freezing point, 80% of all living species on the planet disappeared. This meteorite's most famous victims were the dinosaurs. The dinosaur extinction is a popular topic of conversation in Drumheller, a small city in Western Canada's Badlands, one of the richest fossil beds in the world. I think that the uh, extraterrestrial boli that impacted on the Earth had a huge effect on those last few dinosaurs. It disrupted the ecosystem so much that the big animals did disappear, and it did have an effect on dinosaur extinction. But I also believe that for 10 million years before that, something else was affecting dinosaur diversity. And it was only because their diversity was low that the meteorite or asteroid had as much impact on them as it did. The same event that saw the last of the mighty dinosaurs would leave its mark several hundred kilometers away from the meteorite's crater. The Albion Island quarry in central Belize bears the signature of the impact in the Yucatan Peninsula to this day. Below the quarry's surface, scientists discover a distinctive horizontal layer of yellow clay along one cross-section. It contains an abnormally high concentration of iridium, a rare element on Earth and far more common in meteorites. Samples of the yellow clay revealed dense volcanic matter that was present in the atmosphere at the time and fused with matter from the meteorite itself. Scientists believe that they uncovered an important clue linking the demise of the dinosaurs to the impact event. For many scientists, the sign at the quarry site was unmistakable. All right, here's a sample of this devitrified glass. This comes out of the, the basal level of the, of the diamictite. Some of the researchers that believe that this, that this is a meteorite ejecta blanket also claim that the green mineral was formed from molten rock. And later on, this glass uh, has devitrified to form clay minerals that we see here now. Scientists use carbon dating to place the Yucatan Peninsula impact event at about 65 million years ago. According to theory, 
the impact hit directly after a period believed by scientists to be one of intense and chaotic volcanic activity across the planet. The impact may have sealed the fate of the dinosaurs, along with many other species. And it opened the door for new species to emerge. Earth's mammals rose to prominence and colonized the planet. Among these were the species from which humans evolved. What do humans really have to fear? The chances of an impact that would wipe out life on Earth are slim. But we know more now about the consequences of an eventual hit. In the event of impact, it would be human beings at the mercy of the cosmos. The 1994 Shoemaker-Levy comet's impact with Jupiter caught the attention of the scientific community. It proved that objects such as comets, meteorites or asteroids could hit Earth, and that even relatively small asteroids can cause damage. The United States immediately launched a program called Space Watch to monitor asteroids using some of the world's most powerful telescopes. These telescopes identify even the smallest bits of matter and chart their orbit to predict if any will hit Earth. So far, Space Watch hasn't detected any dangerous objects coming our way. But what would happen if we discovered that, in the next 20 years, a giant asteroid was on a collision course with Earth? Scientists have come up with a few solutions. The first, to blow up the asteroid, could prove impossible, since it would require an astronomical amount of firepower to destroy such a giant object. Some scientists search for a way to harness the power of cosmic objects in order to alter their course. Others call for the use of laser beams. And a third argument involves using the power of the sun to keep the object from crashing to Earth. But neither asteroids nor meteorites present the most serious threat to Earth. They follow an orbit around the sun and are easier to identify than other objects. Comets are the menace in the sky. Hard to detect, comets originate from a very distant place in the universe. It's believed that the delay from the time scientists discover the comet to the time it reaches Earth is merely one year, not nearly enough time to deviate it from its course. But as the search for ways to avert a cosmic collision continues, the reality of these encounters is for many the source of tremendous interest and inspiration. Without the many chance cosmic encounters that our planet Earth has endured over the millennia, life here may never have existed. If in fact microscopic materials necessary for the creation of life actually travel to Earth inside meteorites, the possibility exists that those same life-forming materials have bounced elsewhere in our universe. This gives new meaning to the search for life beyond the boundaries of our planet. While powerful radio telescopes around the globe listen for possible signs of extraterrestrial intelligence, more and more space missions are attempting to discover the true nature of our own cosmic neighborhood. Deo, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, in 2003, the Rosetta probe will leave Earth on board the Ariane 5 rocket for an eight-year journey of 450 million kilometers. Its mission, to orbit Vertanen, a relatively close-ranged comet of the inner solar system and to map changes to its surface as it approaches the sun. It will also drop a small landing unit able to carry out drillings on the surface to determine its composition and to take measurements important to scientific research.
Humans are the stuff of the universe. What reels in the darkness of space may have made life on Earth possible. If these specks of dust and giant rocks bring the magic of seasons and the power of water and fire to Earth, then there is good reason to believe that the future of the universe will determine the future of Earth.